Mario Lopez. Joining me now on Zoom from This Is Us, actor, my guy, Milo Ventimiglia. Welcome to the show, man. How you been? Thanks, Mario. I'm good, brother. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Uh, a lot I want to talk about, but of course, let's start with This Is Us, the final season uh -huh. is coming up. I'm fascinated, Milo, how they've been able to, being a fan of the show and, and watching it, um, continue to go back and forth. And I thought once we discovered how your character, and I don't think I'm spoiling anything because it's been a while now. No. How your <laughs> People character, need to have watched. Yeah, need exactly. Watch. I need to watch at this You're point. You're spoiling something. What? Exactly. Once he, once we discovered that he, he died and uh, with the fire and the th I thought, okay, where can they go from? That's it. That's the peak, right? But no, they kept, and it was like, wow. So kudos to, to the writing staff there. But with that said, what's in store uh, for the family? Oh man. I mean, you know, knowing, knowing that I feel like when the show first started, we were kind of uh, driving things forward from the past. Now I think we're kind of reversing it. We're going from the future back toward the present hmm. and understanding, you know, in the beginning, I think the, the big mystery was all about uh, Jack's death and of course how it impacted his family, his children, his wife. But now what we've started to see are kind of the, the breadcrumb trail of Rebecca's legacy and Rebecca's impact on her children and Rebecca's life post uh, her marriage to Jack and, and, you know, remarrying to Miguel and all of that. So I think we're kind of going the swinging in the other direction of the pendulum of parents you know, one direction was Jack toward the beginning, the first season, second season, third season. And now it's kind of swung the other way where it's it's about Rebecca and this kind of the back half of Rebecca's life. So, you know, understanding that she's going through um, some Alzheimer's um, and some dementia and knowing that we've jumped kind of around in the future, played in the future a little bit and kind of understand, oh, maybe this is coming. I think what we're going to see this season is more reflecting on Rebecca's life and reflecting on Rebecca's impact to her kids. Um, and of course, you know, Jack will still be there. <laughs> Jack will be around in memory. It's just, you know, his, his, his kids are growing up. So, you know, we may have to find uh, different sets of children. Yes. And uh, we've already dealt with alcoholism. So we got to wrap that one up. We've dealt with war. Got to wrap right. that one up um a lot of layers to jack <laughs> a lot of layers to jack there's always something to do with the guy sure. so yeah so much great content on television right now it's it, it truly is the uh the golden age with quality tv and this is us seems to break from the network pack congratulations on the emmy because Thanks, man. i believe you guys are like one of the only guys from um, yeah right from a network show to be nominated that's got to feel even yeah better. If it, I mean, listen, if it always feels good to be in the conversation, you know, I, I don't know that there's the goal of wanting to be recognized, but I think there's just a lot of hardworking people who are talented and, and we're telling the stories that we want to tell the way we want to tell them. So being recognized is just, it's nice. I know it's not something we're aiming for, but it is always nice when that happens. And then, you know, on top of it, it's nice when, when some of us individually get nominated. So, you know. Good for you. Yeah, I know uh, you, you've you directed a couple episodes of the show, correct? I have, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you looking uh, for, for more opportunities to do that outside of the show and what have you? I mean, I listen, I started directing at 25, doing interstitial campaigns for the WB Network. Remember the WB before? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, man. We all remember the WB. Yeah, ba -da, the frog and all right, that. The frog. Um, <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I was doing interstitials and commercial campaigns and digital stuff, kind of low-hanging fruit. Um, so it's been nice that Fogelman and Ken Olin have brought me on board to direct a little bit more. Also, again, you know, where that pendulum swings and things are focusing more on Rebecca, that kind of slims down Jack's storylines a little bit and putting me behind the camera to direct gives me an opportunity just to spend more time with the crew creatively. Smart. So I think it's a smart pivot on productions and to just, Hey, we like having that Vince Amelia around. So let's just throw him behind the camera because maybe he also likes to shoot pretty pictures too. And everybody knows him. He likes everybody. So, you know, yeah. it's been fun. And I think I'm, I think I'm already on the boards to direct one, possibly another one by uh, the end of the season too. Nice man. Good for you. Yeah. 
you're you're also part of this podcast, Strawberry Spring. Now, uh, th- this is a fictional drama. I I picture something like old time radio, or what's it about? Am I off? Exactly, man. Exactly. So when I was a kid growing up, my dad on these long uh, car road trips we'd go on, he'd listen to these old radio plays, like kind of old talkies. You know, you're hearing the folly, like, "Ah, right, we're gonna go see what's going on behind this door." You know, all right, let's talk to him. Hey, what do you say? You know, all these different things. But uh, the new scripted podcast, radio shows, radio plays, um, it's kind of taking a note from all those old time creative storytelling uh, uh, ideas from the past. And this one is based on Strawberry Springs, based on a Stephen King short story. Hmm. And Lee Metzger took that. 11 page story and recrafted it and it's about a journalist um who in this town of um of uh, uh oh my god why am i blanking on the name i recorded this thing and now i'm blanking on the name we got so many things running through my head um is it a real new town sharon. or a fictitious town no the, uh, the the town where this takes place uh new sharon um in the uh the north northeast because of course Stephen King things kind of take place in the Northeast. Yeah. Um, and it's about uh, a guy investigating a serial killer, a Jack the Ripper-esque kind of character. And it's the discovery that these murders keep happening and it's, and it's a recurring thing. Um, it happens you know, once or twice, then eight years later, it happens again in a similar fashion. Ooh. And so over the course of the eight episodes, you're discovering things about the killer through the point of view of this journalist. And the journalist is played by Garrett Hedlund. Um, wow. And I play a friend of his who's also a radio disc jockey who is at the same time kind of trying to make sense of these killings and investigate this as well. There's a, a newspaper gal played by Sid, Sydney Sweeney. Um, just like a really wonderful cast too. And it's, uh, you know, a radio play. That's cool, man. Yet another uh, yeah. platform right there. I dig it. Yeah, totally, totally. Milo reboots, of course, uh, are big right now. Nostalgia uh, always seems to be a hit, and, and superheroes even bigger. Do you think the cast of Heroes could ever re- reunite? I think they tried it that once, like, what was that, about five years ago? They brought it back, or four years ago, they brought it back. They did, uh, it was called uh, Heroes Reboot, Revival, or something. Um, I can't yeah. remember the name of it. Yeah. But it it kind of... I'll be honest, it came in my direction. Um, I was asked to be a part of it, but it didn't feel right. Okay. It felt like they weren't, you know what it felt like? Honestly, it felt like the, the powers that be believed that the creative was bigger than the characters. Hmm. And what I find is TV audiences connect with characters because right. they see themselves in right. that character. Absolutely. And what it felt like was, they were wanting to use Peter Petrelli in the beginning to pull everybody in to be like, hey, look, we got the crew back. And then Peter Petrelli was going to go away for a long time and then pop back up at the end. And I was like, yeah, but what happened to Peter? If you want to tell a story about Peter or Claire or Hero or, you know, Mohinder Suresh or Nathan Petrelli or, um, you know, anybody else, like, that's great. But Matt Parkman, um, I don't know. I mean, there were so many characters, so many different things, but it felt, it just didn't feel right to me. Got it. It, Got it. it, it felt like, personally, it felt like uh, a, a bait and switch. And I wouldn't want to deceive the audience or the fan base of Heroes just by being a part of it in like the tiniest of ways. Not the creative direction you wanted to go in. Respect. No, no. But before I let you go, Milo, I'm going to put you on the spot with some quick questions, quick answers. All right? Sure. What TV show are you watching right now that you uh, recommend? Aside from your own, of course. This is horrible, man. I'm not watching anything right now. You know, like last night I got, I got home. I needed to like unplug my brain and I turned on the Robert Redford film, A River Runs Through It. Really? Just to see these beautiful vistas in here, like a simple <laughs> story. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not the answer you're going for. It's hey. not flashy, it's not sexy, but it was like River runs through it's a great that the river runs through nothing wrong with that. Okay. Oh yeah. What was the first concert you ever attended? No FX. Wow. Band No FX. Yeah. I was a big punk rock kid as a kid. And um down in Orange County? Down in Orange County. And I was underaged. I actually 
wasn't allowed to be there, but somehow I got in. And that was like, that was, I think, one of the first shows I got to. Yeah. Who was your celebrity crush growing up? Oh, man. Um, I remember as a kid having a uh, Cindy Crawford calendar. Yeah. Yeah, and so did I. She owned the black in the black in a black bathing suit. You know what? It's so funny because I asked her too, and she goes, "I only made one." She only made one, so she goes, "I don't." Yeah. Have to and the thing is, we all had it. We yeah, yeah, all yeah. All had it. Oh man, we all had it. I know it was actually it was, it was pretty crazy because uh, we we had a moment where uh, Kate on This Is Us was flipping through a magazine and she asked a question about Cindy Crawford, uh-huh. and it was a conversation with me. So I'm talking to her about Cindy Crawford, and then Cindy Crawford. Instagram did or something, and I was like, "Oh my God, Sean Crawford knows who we are." <laughs> That's surreal. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, all-time favorite Stephen King movie. Ooh, all-time. I mean, uh, Cujo. I'm gonna say Cujo. I was just about to say I love Cujo too. Yeah, Cujo's great. I don't man. know if it holds up, but when we were kids, it was awesome. Terrifying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Saint Bernard. Yeah. The, it doesn't hold mm-hmm. up. You saw it recently. Like One of our producers says it doesn't yeah, all. It's not like two years ago. It doesn't really. Oh, happen. you're breaking my heart. Yeah. Yeah, man, dude, Cujo. I was, it was, f- it was so funny. I was just talking right. with my mom and dad the other day, and I was just like, I'm like, what, what's your guys' favorite book? My dad, without missing a beat, said Cujo. I'm like, God, that was a terrifying movie. Wow. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and last question Who plays you in the Milo Ventimiglia biopic? Mario Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful casting. You know what? I will nail it. Make you proud. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of In course. the meanwhile, listen to Strawberry Spring on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcast. Milo, nice catching up with you, man. Thanks for checking in. Yeah, always, Mario. Appreciate you, brother. Good seeing right, you. Take care. You All too. right, man. On with Mario Lopez.